Hi, welcome to Simple Art at Home with me, Laura Houston. I'd like to start off by saying congratulations to two of our students in the Anaheim Elementary School District. They were winners of the Anaheim Public Utilities Mask Design Contest. So we have Yoltsin, who is a fourth grader at Edison Elementary School, and Frida, who is a fifth grader at Orange Grove Elementary School. Out of over 80 entries, their mask designs were chosen as winners by the Anaheim Public Utilities Department, so congratulations. Before we start on our project, I'd like to take a look at some fabulous student art that was sent in to me. Let's take a look. Thank you so much for sending in your art. I just love seeing art that um, students send to me. And again, my email is down there at the bottom of the screen. I always keep it up um, so you know where to send it. Today's art lesson is geared towards fourth graders, fifth graders, and sixth graders. However, you can be in any grade or you could be any age to enjoy and participate in this lesson. Our theme today is Mexican folk art. And you're going to need a window with sunlight coming through, and I will explain that more once we get into the project, but we're going to be dealing with symmetry and folding paper and tracing. So I'm gonna go ahead and meet you at the table. Okay, so I'm just starting with a rectangular piece of paper, and I'm going to fold it in half and just run my finger along the crease. Now, um, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna draw it with pencil and then I plan to go over it darker with, um, with a black pen so that you can see it clearly. But we're gonna be sketching a, an eagle or an owl type of bird. And we're only doing the half of it because the rest we're going to trace it. So right about here, leave some space at the top. Leave about, oh, inch and a half to two inches at the top. And I'm just going to draw a shape, sketching a little bit that comes down like this. This is going to be his head. And it's, it's parallel, that line is parallel to the fold. And then I'm going to draw another shape that comes out this way and kind of curves down. This will be his chest area. And I'll just have it kind of come in towards the center. Now I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to add the beak in. And for the beak, it'll be right about here. We're going to start with a line there and it's going to come out down and this will just meet it right about there and so now I'm going to erase uh, this line right here because we don't want that face line in front of the beak we want it the opposite okay so there we have the beak and I'm going to continue down I'm going to draw a leg this is a very simplified version of a bird so we're going to have a Kind of like a chunky leg that kind of comes down like this and we'll have like a foot very simplified version 
of a foot with these little upside down U's at the bottom representing claws. And then we will also have um, tail feathers that come out right about here, this area. And this. And then we'll extend out, I'm gonna go back up here now and do a wing. We'll do an outstretched wing up about right here. Have it come in. Again, I'm just sketching with my pencil. I will go over this again with black pen so you can see it a little better. Let's do three wings. So one more line and then we'll make Oh, some decorative half circles that go one, two, three, and then again, one, two, three, and then let's have some feathers come down. I'm going to draw, I'm going to squeeze four upside down feathers right here. My table is shaking because I just saw my cat put his two paws up on the table to kind of see what's going on up there. Aren't pets fun, right? <laughs> Here's one feather, and then we're gonna have another one kind of overlap behind it, and then they're gonna get smaller and smaller right there. Okay, and now I'm going to come back down here, and I'm going to have more tail feathers Kind of come out in this direction and let's see just kind of trying to figure out a little simple design and as you can see we're only doing half I bet you can already figure out in your mind what I'm doing here it's going to be symmetrical one more like that and then let's take this out a little bit farther and do We'll just mimic another line here underneath. There. We'll add some details later. Let's put an eye on him, on our bird. So maybe about right here. An eye. And then let's add uh, feathers on top. Now, the tricky part is one of the feathers is going to be right on the fold, so we're only going to do half of a feather here. And then we'll do one more feather here next to it. Okay. And I will, like I said before, we'll add some little designs and patterns later. Why don't we do, since this is in the style of Mexican folk art, let's do some wispy designs that go up like this. So I'm going to draw a line up like this and then we will draw a circle, another circle, and a dot. And let's have a couple more come off from this. These can be very simplified flowers. And I think with these I'll just put another circle inside. And then we'll do one more over here. And maybe over here, let's just do a couple of lines with a dot. These are just decorative. And why don't we put some more here? Put a dot there. So I just, I researched a little bit about Mexican folk art, so I'm just pulling some designs from what I found. Down here, let's add a flower. And this is going to be a little hard because we're only going to draw half of the flower. If you've ever made Valentine's where you draw half of a heart and then you open, you cut it and open it up and you have the full heart, that's kind of what we're doing. We're not cutting, we're just using designs here. So there's half of the center of the flower. And then I'll just draw a petal here. So when I open it, the other half will be there. I'm just going to put a few petals here. 
And then we'll do one more right there. And then let's do another little design that goes something like this. Put similar to the top with the circles. And we have one coming off like that. Maybe one over here. You can make this up. You don't you can do your own designs when it comes to this. Just do something like that. And then why don't we just have two more wispy lines down there. Okay, so I'm going to trace over this with a pen. And remember, you can stop this video and rewatch parts of it if you need to to see how I drew something. Maybe you want to do a completely different design than what I did. So I tried to research a little bit about Mexican folk art and really most countries have their own form of folk art. Um, generally, folk art refers to art that is made by hand using traditional methods. Generally, the artist is not professionally trained. They are rather um, self-taught, meaning they did not go to a specific art school to learn the craft or the technique. And you can find Mexican folk art in a few different um, usages. Um, it's often used for utilitarian purposes. For example, by that I mean useful items such as on pottery or on tiles. It's used as a decorative uh, manner. It can also be used for religious purposes. Some folk art can be used as a source of income. It can be sold, especially um, to tourists, people who come to visit and find the art beautiful. It's, so folk art can become a source of income for a person. Generally, people who create folk art have um, a full-time job, like either they're farmers or, you know, they work somewhere, but folk art becomes like an after-hours type of um, hobby for the person. So I'm just going over and tracing over my pencil. Um, not all folk art is symmetrical. Most of it isn't, but there are some designs that are, and I thought that was interesting since, you know, since you're learning about symmetry in math, I thought I would throw in this extra challenge to you to come and uh, draw something symmetrical with me. You know, maybe you want to come up with your own design. You know, these are very simplified. I don't know what these are. are these maybe berries or flowers. And we're going to color it with very vibrant and bright colors. Um, what we could do is, you know, we can color in the eye completely. We can add some designs here we can draw another circle around the eye. How about put some, I like dots. Dots are an interesting way to make something more unique. Um, later, I'm gonna show you how to draw a line or a stripe on his head. Why don't we, we'll do the other stripes later. We can also have some lines here. This will be a leg, so I'm gonna leave that plain. 
You could also do some dots down the center of these feathers. So, you know, you can make this your own. And sometimes it's best to add all these little details after you finish the tracing through the window method. So um, just I'm just going to show you while I have it up here. You can add lines here or dots in the middle of the flower. Okay. And I think it's also interesting to carry on the theme of these dots all the way through. We could just put some on that outstretched wing. So here we have half of, I don't know if this is maybe an owl or an eagle. Um, we often see birds, flowers, and suns in Mexican folk art. So I thought we would do something like this. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you how I used a window for the next phase of the project. So here I am at my sliding glass door. This is a window here and I am recommending that you take your paper that's been folded and turn it over and hold it up to the light. That's how I trace this already with the fine, the ultra fine tip pen but you can see through the paper. If this were just sitting on my desk, I wouldn't be able to see through it to trace and get a symmetrical design. So when you're doing this project, be careful of the beak. You don't want to trace that beak because obviously we want our bird or our owl here to only have one beak. We don't want it going out on both sides. So I'm just gonna show you, I'm gonna just go over the, the exterior, the outside line with a thicker Sharpie. Okay, so now you see that I've added a little more detail. I added a stripe, so sometimes it's easier once the paper is opened. I added a line, a decorative line that goes from, oh, about the middle of the head over here. And I also added dots all across his chest and another line here. And I went back in and added the same details to this side. And again, these are just suggestions. You can, you can design your artwork however you want. On this show, there's no way to do this wrong. I always just offer suggestions and I'm just hoping to inspire you to create your own art. I'm not grading you. You can do whatever you want. So I'm just going to color a part of this and then I will show you a finished product. Um, really, um, Mexican folk art is colored with very um, vibrant and bright colors. So it's more of um, like happy, um, celebratory colors. I'm just looking for my light purple. I'm going to put that in here. I'm leaving a little bit of space here to kind of just make the feathers stand out from each other. I'm leaving some white. I think it's an interesting look. I'm gonna put some orange over here. And maybe we'll add some blue to his face. I'm gonna leave a little white again around here as well. But again, you can color this however you want to. Um, again, you can use, if you're using thick enough paper, you can use watercolors. Although it's hard to trace through, you'd have to add an extra step. Some of you uh, watching, I know you made mandalas. You, you learned from that lesson. That's using similar folding technique. Saw some of the students from Jefferson shared their mandala artwork. I think I would add, uh, I think I'm gonna add some yellow here to this stripe. And I think I might do the same stripe here in yellow. And for this type of artwork, um, you can use any colors you want. It doesn't have, obviously it's not the typical colors of a bird. We're just making it, um, 
it's kind of happy and fun. You know, color it the way that you would want to look at it hanging up on your bedroom wall. I hope you do hang some of your art up in your room or in your house or on your refrigerator. I would add, hmm, I'm going to add some red, I think, to this wing. I'm going to leave the dots exposed. I'm not going to cover color over the dots. Just kind of like that look. Again, you can do whatever you want. That's the great thing about art. There we go, there's some red. I'm pushing down hard because I do like using vibrant colors. I'm gonna add some green under here. I'll just color a few more. Because I think you guys are all, you're all good at coloring. You don't, you don't need me for this part. When it comes to uh, these flowers, I would color each of these. I would make them stand out. I would do all these a different, different colors. Like I'll add purple here and then maybe some pink around here. And maybe put, um, you know, some golden, maybe I'll add a golden, a goldenrod color here. It's almost like an orangey yellow in the center of all of these. The fun, this is, these are fun to color because you don't have to stick with the true colors in nature. You can do whatever you want. And I think when it comes to this flower down here, oftentimes in folk art, you see the petals all um, colored in a different color. So again, it adds to just, it's so like vibrant and happy. So I'll put like pink there and maybe blue over here. And maybe I'll choose a light green down here. You see what I mean? You can color each petal a different color. And then I'm going to grab that same goldenrod color for the center. So I'm just going to move on and show you. Um, here's another one that I completed. I didn't color as hard. The first time I did this, I didn't push as hard. And I don't think it looks as good. Um, I think it looks better when you, you color... Um, boldly and um, dark, like fill in that white, you know, all in there. But as you can see, I used all different colors on the flowers and um, it just looks really fun and happy. So this is my finished product. I really can't wait to see what you do for your project. I will meet you back up at the easel. So um, if you enjoyed learning about uh, Mexican folk art today, you can visit the Museum of International Folk Art. Visit their website. Their actual museum is in New Mexico. But there you can learn about how, um, what the folk art looks like uh, from different countries. But this was done in the style of Mexican folk art. And please take pictures of your work and share it with me. And before I go, um, let's take a look at um, some more student artwork. Bye.